We're working in intermediate algebra. This is section 6.4, starts on page 234. The topic is solving quadratic equations using the quadratic formula. All right, the first thing we're going to do is uh, define or write out what the quadratic formula is. x equals negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, and all of that is over 2a. And you might be wondering uh, what in the world we're solving for x. a, b, and c are the coefficients of your quadratic equation when it is in standard form. Example 1 says to solve using the quadratic formula, 3x squared minus 8x plus 4, and this should be equals 0, not 9. So the first thing you want to make sure when you're solving quadratic equation using quadratic formula, just like when factoring, your equation should equal 0. This equation needs to be in standard form, which means that it is in descending form for these terms over here. So we have an x squared, an x term, then a constant term. So this is standard form. The coefficients then define a, b, and c. So if we write that over here to the side, a is going to be the coefficient of the first term, 3, b is the coefficient of the second term, and that negative sign goes with it, c is the coefficient of the third term. And I'm going to rewrite my formula, even though we can see it up here, we can reference it, but it's always a good idea to rewrite it before you're going to use it. So, x equals negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And then I'm going to take these coefficients here, a, b, and c, and I'm going to fit them into this part of the formula. I'm going to simplify all of this, and that will tell me what x equals. So negative b would be negative negative 8 because 8 is already negative this negative is always there so if 8 if your b is positive you will only have one negative but if your b is negative you have two here so watch for that it's probably the most common mistake I see students using this b squared will be negative 8 squared using the parentheses there minus 4 times a which is 3 times c, which is 4. Extend that out, all over 2 times a, which is 3. So we're just going to start simplifying all of this. These negative signs uh, simplify to make a positive 8. Here I have negative 8 squared, which is positive 64. When I get ready to do this part, I always look at the signs first. I have a negative times a positive times a positive is going to make a negative. Once I write it, I don't have to think about it anymore. Then I can just multiply. 4 times 3 is 12. 12 times 4 is 48. And in the denominator, 2 times 3 is 6. And I'm just going to scroll down and simplify a little bit more. I have 8 plus minus 64 minus 48 is 16 over 6. I'm going to keep simplifying. The square root of 16 is 4. Now, a lot of times this radical right here does not simplify to make a real number or a whole number. Um, most of the time you just simplify this radical and your answer ends up being here. But since this was a perfect square, and I end up with my 4 over here, to continue to simplify this, I now need to separate this plus minus. So I'm going to make two expressions, one with the plus and one with the minus. So we'll carry that down here. I'm going to have 8 plus 4 divided by 6 and 8 minus 4 divided by 6. And then I'm going to continue to simplify those. This is. 12 divided by 6, which is 2. This is 4 over 6, which reduces to make 2 thirds. And those 
are your two answers. So we'll make an expression here that says x equals 2 thirds and 2. Example 2, still on page 234, it says x squared minus x minus 5 equals 0. And the directions say solve using the quadratic formula. So the first thing we do is define a, b, and c. Um, make sure your equation equals 0 before you do this. Make sure that your terms are in descending order. Then the coefficients. The coefficient of uh, the first term is 1. The coefficient of the second term is negative 1. And the coefficient of the third term is the constant, which is negative 5. Then I'm going to write the formula. x equals negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, all of that over 2a. Now make sure that you're writing your fraction bar under everything up here because a lot of times I see students only write the fraction bar under the radical part. The fraction bar goes under everything. This negative b, the plus minus, the whole thing up here, then the fraction bar goes on over under the whole thing. Now I'm going to fit these into here just like we did in the previous example. Negative b will be negative negative 1 plus minus b squared minus 4 times a times c, use the parentheses with those negative numbers, 2 times a. Then we just simplify. Starting here, negative negative 1 is positive 1 plus minus the square root of negative 1 squared is also positive 1. When I get to this here, I'm looking at signs. I have a negative times a positive times a negative it does make a positive, so I'm going to write plus here. Then I can just multiply the numbers. 4 times 1 is 4. 4 times 5 is 20. In the denominator, 2 times 1 is 2. Okay, so we have 1 plus minus the square root of 21 over 2. And it turns out that that is it. That cannot be simplified any further. So that's going to be your solution. x equals 1 plus minus the square root of 21 over 2. Uh, how do I know this can't be simplified any further? The next step would be to simplify this radical. Uh, 21 has no perfect square factors. The only factors of 21 are 7 and 3. Neither one of those are perfect squares, so I can't bring anything out. So therefore, it's done. All right, example 3 is on the top of page 235. Solve using the quadratic formula 2x squared plus 8x plus 7 equals 0. The first step is to define a, b, and c, making sure my equation equals 0. Make sure this is in descending order. I'm going to define a, b, and c. So a is 2, b is 8, c is 7. And I'm going to write my formula. x equals negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And then I'm going to fit my a, b, and c into this formula. So negative b will be negative 8 plus minus the square root of 8 squared minus 4 times 2 times 7 all over 2 times 2. And I'm just going to start simplifying. This time I don't have the double negatives because my b was positive just this one negative coming down. So I don't have to simplify this, so I'm going to start simplifying here. So I have ne negative 8 plus minus 8 squared is 64. Looking at my signs, negative times positive times positive makes negative. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 times 7 is 56. In the denominator, 2 times 2 is 4. I'm going to continue to simplify here. 
negative 8 plus minus 64 minus 56 is 8. I don't need all of that. All right, this 8 here is not a perfect square, but it does simplify because it does have a perfect square factor. Um, the factors of 8 are 4 and 2, so this 4 can be square rooted and brought to the outside, and that's just a simplify step. So negative 8 plus minus 2, square root of 2, over 4. Um, we did this back in chapter 5, so if you need to go back and review simplifying radicals, that was in chapter 5. When you bring this 4 to the outside, we take the square root of it. Square root of 4 is 2. This 2 is left underneath. Now, it looks like we're done. However, this can all be simplified. And when you're simplifying a radical, I, I use this little heart here. You can draw a heart around these three numbers. These three numbers here all have to be reduced together. They have to have a common factor. You can ignore the radical over here. As long as you simplified really well here, this number doesn't have any effect. But these three numbers, these three coefficients, if they have a common factor, you're going to reduce them all together. And of course, 8 and 2 and 4 have a common factor of 2. So we're going to divide all of those numbers by 2, and that will reduce our radical here. So we end up with negative 4, 8 divided by 2, plus minus this 2 divided by 2 is 1. You don't really need to write the 1. It's always implied to be there, but you can if you want. And then in the denominator, 4 divided by 2 is 2. And now this is simplified. Even though you're probably thinking, oh wow, all of these have a common factor, but this one doesn't count, remember? And this is a 1 here. 4 and 1 and 2 do not have a common factor. The only thing you could do would be to separate this into two uh, fractions if you wanted to do that, if your teacher required you, but I'm perfectly fine with this answer here. It's fully reduced. All right, example four says solve using quadratic formula 4x squared plus x plus 1 equals 0. Make sure your equation equals 0. Make sure your terms are in descending order. And then assign a is 4, b is 1, c is 1. And we're going to write our formula. x equals negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And we're then going to substitute a, b, and c into the formula. So negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c over 2 times a. Then we're just going to start simplifying here. And again, we only have the one negative this time. Because b is positive, this is the only negative that came down. So start simplifying here. We have negative 1 plus minus the square root of 1 squared is 1. Look at your signs here. Negative times positive times positive makes negative. 4 times 4 is 16. 16 times 1 is 16. 2 times 4 in the denominator makes 8. Alright, continuing to simplify. Negative 1 plus minus the square root of... Alright, 1 minus 16 is a negative number. That would be negative 15 over 8. Now, this 15 doesn't have any perfect squares, and the fact that it's a negative number means that this is not a real number. We're looking at an imaginary number now. So whenever you have a negative under here, remember from chapter 5 that you have to pull that negative out to uh, give yourself an i. So there would be negative 1 from here, plus minus. We're going to, we're going to look at this negative 15 as negative 1 times positive 15. The square root of negative 1 is i. So that's why there's an i on the outside, and the 15 does not simplify. 
So that 15 has to stay on the inside. And then we have the 8 in the denominator. And this is your solution. Alright, we're going to do the word problems in the next video, so come back for part B.